Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Chuck White and today's lesson is on buffer solutions. A buffer solution is a solution that contains relatively high concentrations of both a weak acid and its conjugate base. So buffer solutions are designed to hold a pH at a relatively constant value, and they're important in biological systems. For example, your blood has uh, buffer systems in it to maintain the stability of pH-sensitive chemical reactions. If the pH changed, then the concentration of hydronium ions would change, and the rate of any chemical reaction involving hydronium hydronium ions would also change, and you wouldn't want uh, biological systems to just be running amok if you uh, had a change in pH. So we've already seen how dilute aqueous acids uh, can uh, be solved, those systems can be solved to find the hydronium ion concentration. For example, the pH of quarter molar benzoic acid is 2.4 or a hydronium ion concentration of 4 times 10 to the minus 3, which is about 40,000 times higher than neutral uh, pH 7 solution. Uh, if we have a strong acid, then we can reach this pH with only a very small concentration of strong acid, in fact 0 0.004 moles per liter, because it, the acid, HCl in this case, dissociates or ionizes quantitatively in aqueous solution to produce all hydronium ions. In buffer solution, uh, this is different. And so now let's consider a mixture of 0.1 molar benzoic acid and 0.1 molar sodium benzoate. Sodium benzoate is a salt. Uh, all sodium salts are soluble in aqueous solution, so we know that addition of sodium benzoate will create uh, 0.1 moles per liter of benzoate anion, which is the conjugate base of benzoic acid. So a, a perfectly general way of getting the conjugate base part into solution is through sodium salts or potassium salts. Uh, we can write the acid equation in the usual way uh, as written here, and we start now with 0.1 molar benzoic acid on the left-hand side. Water has unit uh, thermodynamic activity. On the right-hand side, uh, we start with 0.1 molar benzoate anion, and then this equilibrium is going to shift slightly to the right in order to produce some hydronium ion, and uh, so we will increase the hydronium ion concentration by an amount x, the benzoate anion concentration will increase by an amount x and the benzoic acid concentration will decrease slightly by a small amount x. The Ka expression then is going to be the um, hydronium ion concentration times the benzoate anion concentration divided by the benzoic acid concentration. And we're anticipating now that the value of x is going to be small in comparison to 0.1 uh, moles per liter. And so if you add x to 0.1 or subtract x from 0.1, you're going to get essentially 0.1. So this kind of equation is actually very easy to solve, and uh, we get uh, that the point ones essentially cancel in the numerator and the denominator, and we're left only with a factor of x, which is equal to 6.46 times 10 to the minus 5. Now this x is also equal to the hydronium ion concentration, so we can take the minus base 10 logarithm of this and end up with a pH of 4.19. Now let's see what happens if we add 0.01 molar HCl to this buffer solution. Ordinarily, if we made up a 0.01 molar solution of HCl from uh, liquid water, we would send the pH from 7, its initial value, all the way down to 2, which would be the minus base 10 logarithm of 0.01. And so that would be a change of 5 pH units, or 10 to the fifth uh, in concentration of hydronium ion, or 100,000-fold change in hydronium ion concentration. That's huge. Uh, in this case, uh, the change in hydronium is going to be much, much less. So the effect of adding 0.01 molar moles per liter of HCl to this buffer solution is going to be to convert some of the conjugate base to its acid form. The strong acid HCl is going to react preferentially with the base to convert it to benzoic acid. So we can formulate this problem by thinking about it in terms of an initial benzoic acid concentration which is increased by 0.01 moles per liter. So now it's 0.11 and the benzoate anion concentration is decreased by 0.01 so its starting point is 0.09. 
and then we can write the acid equation in the usual way and consider it to be ionized from the beginning uh, as uh, producing some um, hydronium ion concentration and decreasing the amount of benzoic acid and increasing the amount of benzoate anion. We solve this in the usual way, except now we only have 0.09 moles per liter plus x, which we'll ignore of the base, and 0.11 moles per liter uh, minus x, which we'll ignore of the acid. And so we've solved this, again, easy equation by ignoring the x's in parentheses to find that x, or the hydronium ion concentration, is 7.9 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per liter. And this, again, gives us a pH of 4.1 instead of the 4.19 that we had before. So now we have a relatively small change in pH and we find that the hydronium ion concentration has changed only 22% compared with five orders of magnitude for, that it would have been for a neutral solution. So the presence of a moderate concentration of base, in this case benzoate anion, buffers the addition of a small amount of strong acid by converting it to benzoic acid. And uh, relative and the relative concentrations of the benzoic acid and the benzoate anion are nearly unchanged, and so the pH remains nearly unchanged. Buffers work the other way by buffering against the addition of a small amount of strong base by converting the acid to its base form and again changing the relative concentrations of benzoic acid and benzoate anion anion by only a small amount, and so raising the pH by only a small amount. So the maximum buffering effect is possible when concentrations of the acid and its conjugate base are about the same. That way uh, you can buffer either against the unexpected addition of small amounts of strong acid or strong base in either way. And under these conditions the pH is approximately equal to the pKa. More precisely, if we write the equilibrium expression, uh, we can say that the Ka value must be equal to the hydronium ion concentration times the uh, base concentration, which is the initial base concentration plus a little bit that comes from the ionization. And then in the denominator, we have the initial uh, HA concentration minus a little bit that comes from the uh, ionization. And if we ignore the x's in parentheses, if the amount of ionization is small compared with the amount of base and acid initially present, then this is approximately equal to um, the, the hydronium ion concentration times the base concentration initial uh, divided by the initial acid concentration. If we take the minus base 10 logarithm of both sides of this equation, we can rearrange this uh, to form an equation that says that the pH of a solution is going to be approximately equal to the pKa of the, of the solution plus the base 10 logarithm of the relative amounts of acid and base initially at present in the buffer. And this is called the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, and it's a very useful approximation for calculating the approximate pH of any buffer solution. So how would we choose a buffer solution? Well, we would want to choose an acid-base pair, a conjugate acid-base pair, that has a pKa of the acid that's close to the desired pH of the buffer solution. And that way, the relative amounts of acid and base in the solution are going to be about the same, and we have the maximum buffering effect. So we, adjust the, we would then adjust the relative concentrations of acid and base to create exactly the desired pH. And so if we take the Henderson-Hasselbach equation from the last slide and take the um, uh, exponential, the base 10 exponential of both sides, we find that the relative concentrations of base and acid that we need is approximately equal to 10 to the pH minus pKa. So if the pH and pKa are the same, just by accident, then that would be 10 to the 0 or 1, and we would want uh, the same concentrations of acid and base. Uh, if we want a pH that's slightly different from uh, the pKa value, then we would have to adjust the relative concentrations to get exactly the right pH. It's important when you make uh, a buffer solution to use concentrations that are high enough uh, to uh, buffer any anticipated addition of strong acid or strong base to the solution. So if you're only 
uh, anticipating very small amounts of acid or base to be added uh, by a chemical reaction, for example, then you can use fairly low concentrations like 0.1 moles per liter of the acid and its conjugate base. If you are anticipating higher concentrations or you need tighter control on the pH, then you have to use higher concentrations of both the acid and the base in your buffer solution. So next time we will talk about acid-base titrations.